sorry, bro. No, no, it's fine, bro. How are you, bro? It's a bit This bowl is going to be a bit of a Come through, come through. I'll just finish this diary, bro. Oh, yeah. That's where we're going, bro. No, that's fine, that's fine. Where did they take this? So we ended up at fucking BWS and Woolies. On the other side. The other side of the station. And I stopped to put it back in, took us to the other side again. I'm like, fuck, we've got a ring in there. No, no, it's all good. Yeah, we'll go in, mate. There's so many years that I could go into and start. Yep. Um, in my opinion, I don't, in my opinion, the musical aspect of what you've done over the last 10 plus years yep. doesn't get focused on enough. That's just my opinion. So what I wanted to do is go into a bit of detail of the projects you've put out. Because no. bro, you've done like, was it 11 plus now? So I've done nine albums and two mixtapes, and I've done about, honestly, about 120 promo tracks. 120? Yeah. So you add all them up with the song, yeah, got like 500 songs or something. Yeah. But it's like, was it like a almost an album a year? Yeah, so that's what I did. Yeah. My game, uh, my plan was to attack the game one album a year. Yeah. So I did Nebulizer, <clears throat> followed it with No Rest, and then just an Keep album a year every year. Because Nebulizer... Uh, is produced by Nebs. Nebs, yeah. That's what their name. That's how we got from. the name. Yeah, yeah. Because he was making the bangers, and I said to him, I'll "Make it, name it after you, bro." But the one that the two that popped off, uh, they're like uh, a mixture of like four or five different genres. Like you couldn't put your finger on it. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for, bro. The spin cunts out. <laughs> so we had like trap on there. We had like dance. <laughs> like you yeah. know what I mean? House shit and fucking. Like that, don't fuck with curses, pure fucking techno shit, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And at the time, in Aussie rap, there wasn't cunts doing that, man. Like, so no one. Like, yeah, like cunts are doing it now. Now it's pretty popular, bro. But when I did it, I got like dragged through the mud for it, you know what I mean? You got so, dragged like, for a lot of things. Yeah, bro. I copped the bullets for a lot of shit in this scene, bro. <laughs> you did, bro. I copped the bullets, but it's all good. We'll go through the bullets, don't worry. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's Nebulizer. Um, I just this that's all right. Sorry, bro. No, no, it's fun. So, was that the first official project you put together? Um, no, I did one mixtape before mixtapes that? before, two yeah. years before that. Yeah. So, 2007, I dropped Straight Out the Gutter, yeah. which was a mixtape with 19, 20 songs. 2009, I dropped Down the Drain, and then I started working with Nebs. In 2011, we dropped Nebulizer. From then, it's been an album a year, and promo is just fucking... And each one's like 18 to 20 tracks. It's not like yeah, EPs. I'm or... not doing short albums, bro. Nah. Yeah. Shortest I did was Roll the Dice, but other than that, most of them are 17 to 20. Uh, which, shout out Shetty. Is, do you still speak to Shetty? How do you know that, bro? <laughs> Shetty. Yeah. Sick so, cunt. He got me into rap, bro. So what, what wow. Tupac album did he give up? <laughs> How do you know this shit, bro? <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me um Tupac. Uh, greatest Hits. The Greatest Hits one. Yeah, and he gave me, I remember he gave me a Coolio CD with it as well. Gangsta's Paradise. Yeah, and it had a tag on it from his cousin. And yeah, that's what got me into it, bro, year three or something. Fucking yeah. spin out, you know that, bro. Shout out to Shetty. Yeah. Um, and was it the the school year? Yeah. No, but yeah, the high school. Robert Townsend. Robert Townsend. Yeah. Because you used to always go at... Um, like the teachers that used to always talk shit. Yeah, yeah, and I went at the cops and shit. <laughs> that's how I like, yeah, that's how it got started. You go at the teachers because they were the authority at the time and the cops and then it turned into getting more creative and yep. that's how it started. Like I got a local buzz first, mm. you know what I mean? And then from there it kind of grew. Did you, did you intend, like did you do that purposely? Like did you uh, want to conquer here or did you just do the sound that you enjoyed and then wondered, all right, 
No, I always, take care of itself. I always wanted to be the top, yeah. the top cunt, bro. Like that was the aim, and I always wanted to hit him with heaps of fucking tracks, man. You know what I mean? Keep relevant, and that's what I did at the start. And it's good because it set me up where I'm in a position I can chill now, mm. put out music when I want. Mm. So the one of my f- personal favourite projects um, it has the Scott versus Cursor, and then yeah. You go into some, like, uh, how much we can go into, but you go into some, like, real cool stuff about, you know, uh, secret societies. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did that happen? No, that was just a troll, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't talk about that one. You can't. Because <laughs> you, you, you even blew it out. Uh, names. names. Like, yeah. They weren't. Like, <laughs> they go backwards. It just made trip cunts out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, so many cunts bought into it, bro. Yeah, like, fucking. Cunts are new, bro, but, like. Did you really What's the go there, bro? Like, no, I'm trolling, man. Like, yeah. Uh, I was trolling before it was cool, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what I wanted to bring up because you you knew how the internet moved really early, yeah, bro. Yeah. One interview I watched, I think you said something like, turn the comments of this shit because I don't want no cunt to say nothing. Yeah, after the 360 anything. battle, yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, bro. Like you wanted the... See, I was yeah. more... See, back then, you just reminded me I was more sensitive what people said. Now I don't give a fuck because I've yeah. copped it for that long. It's like, fuck it. But back then, I was like, no, nah, fuck you. You don't get a say. Shut it down. Here's my music. But now it's just like, fuck, say what you want, man. I'm cemented what I wanted to do. That's important you say that, bro. How important is it not giving a fuck? Very, bro. If you come in this game sensitive, it's going to break you. You know what I mean? Like, there's going to be rappers going at you. It's going to be fans going at you. It's going to be critics. It's going to be journalists. And if you're sensitive, bro, you got to... Like, I've got thick skin, man. Cunts can say what they want, but you got to fight through it. I've seen cunts quit because of that. Cop too much shit bullying. and don't... No, fuck it. Can't handle this. Fucking flips them out. But you just got to... You know what I mean? Fuck it. Let's see. Do you think, uh, like... Because of your attitude, that's what made people come at you. Because yeah. not many people live like that. Like, yeah. And before me, it was like a um, obese records, general pants clothing was the fucking thing. When You know what I mean? So I when think, I'm... Yeah. Yeah, that was like the scene, bro. So I was so different to that when I come in. Even Pegs at Obese was a bit weary on signing me because he's like, what the fuck is this? And shout out to Torture. He... Spoke to Pegs and Pegs took the nebulizer, and from then it just fucking they knew I started a fucking don't know how to s- influence, bro. Influence, I influenced a lot of shit. You did. That's how I'd put it. I influenced, and there was a chain of events after that. That's that's what happens when you're honest, right? Like you, you were not were you. You still are. My, that's why I think in terms of fan fandom. You, um, not to skip a whole career, but you, you touched on it. Um, when people listen to you, that's it. They're latched and they become your fan fan. Yeah. Because you tell it like how exactly, like you said, I'm both because like we're yeah. pretending I got money. Yeah. Before. Yeah, exactly, bro. There was no ne- no need to put a front on for me. I was a broke cunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just straight up with it. And um, yeah. And the other rappers were really doing what they were rapping about, but that was a difference. I was like, I'm fucking broke, man. Mm. Buy my CD. And then they see my rap battles, kind of see my charisma. And I got like, that's why I got the most dedicated fan base, bro. Uh, tattoos, fucking. The full leg sleeves and sleeves, like cunts with me on their back. And cunts got me album cover across his chest. Like, it's just fucking crazy dedication. How do you feel when you see that? I spin out. Still now, like, there's fucking, like, 500 or something, bro. If I get sent one, I'm, I still spin out. Like, about three weeks ago, I got sent one of two chicks got cursor on their ass. Like, fuck, man. <laughs> They're going to get married in fucking ten years, and the husband's going to, what the fuck's this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, by the battle raps. Mm. Like, my, uh, let's tell you, like, a little basketball with myself and experiencing yep. the battle raps. Uh, my brother's ten years younger than me, and he would send me... Like, I'm not far age from you, I think. Um, yep. And he would send me, like, the battle raps that you would do. Yep. Um, 
so I grew like I grew up on them. That's ten years ago. Um, Man. And, and I used to watch it and I used to say, This guy's the funniest guy. <laughs> That's how I got a lot of fans, bro. He's exactly like that. Uh, they're like fucking they seen like it that funny side, bro. They seen that charisma. Like, you this yeah. funny cunt. Then you got to play a twenty second of your song, like you pick an intro. So I played I Am Cursor off my mixtape. Cunts would search that on YouTube. Fucking boom. I mean, music starts going. So I get the fans from the battle rap, get them into music, and they watch me blow up, and it's like, they're like, fuck, I watched him come from this. I think that's why they're so dedicated, bro. They've seen it all happen. Yeah, from I grew up, up in front of cameras. Like, you know what I mean? From sure, battle rap, my too. whole career, you can go back and from 2009 mixtapes and kind of follow the journey. Go, fuck. Because the battle raps, bro, uh, you only that's lost... a big part, bro. People overlook how big that... That blew me up type thing, bro. Massive because, like, I think in one interview you said that even if they don't like me, they, if I give them a laugh, they're going to go search my music. Facts, bro. And all my IG, all, yep. my, all my Facebook, or yep. whatever. And yep. all converted. Because you get no radio play. Nothing, bro. And never have. You still have. Never have. Like, Fuck the radio. <laughs> yeah, fuck yous. And that, I think that worked to my favour because every album I'm like, all right, they're ignoring. By the second album, I'm like, fuck the radio. Yeah. Fuck you. You don't want to play me? Fuck you. Yeah. The fans got behind it. Yeah. And I heard a podcast, some cunt from Triple J's, like they're getting 50 calls a week, play cursor. For some reason, they wouldn't, bro. I can't work it out. Now they're jumping on the wagon playing all the local new cunts. Shout out to them. I'm happy they're getting radio play. But when I was there, bro, shut it down. It's fucking that style, cut it out. They wanted that illy 360. Vanilla. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if, even if the mainstream did give you attention, mm. I remember I watched the interview, they got you on the, is it to the morning show or something like that? Yeah, they, um, they, Studio 10. That's the one. <laughs> they, got, they got you on there. <laughs> they try, yeah, yeah. Did you know that's what they were going to ask her? No idea. I was going on, they were saying... They want to talk about rap. That's all I knew. Told you. That's, so I went through OBs. Got hooked up. Was told it was about rap. Got there, bro. I fucking try to make up. I'm like, fuck that shit. I just go on. Mic me up. Sit down. Like, yeah, how are you? Camera rolls and they hit me with fucking <laughs> these lyrics, these lyrics defend this. Bizarre from D12. Snoop Dogg. Like, what the fuck's this, man? It's not about me album. Didn't even get to plug it. I think you threw a couple of lines in there. Well, I think you, ha- but the way you handled it, I'm not just telling it because you're here, but the way you handled it, like a pure G, because they threw stuff at you and you just went, well, what about a movie? Like, does that mean uh, they're going to go do it? It's not the director's yeah. fault. It's not the. Exactly, bro. And the parents, because they were saying, like, what if a kid hears this? I'm like, well, that's up to the parents. Just the just the- exactly, bro. It's up to the parents. A three year old can't just type my name in and fucking. You know what I mean? Like, and they kind of fucking shut them up. But yeah, they were out for fucking blood, bro, I reckon, hey. And it backfired on them. Did, they were out to shut stupid. me down. Yeah, yeah. They turned the comments off. Out of all their videos, that one's off. Because everyone was going, fuck you, fucking curse. <laughs> curse of killed you. You fucking try this. They turned them off. I'm like, oh, he can't. But that's what happens, eh? I suppose at that time. Yeah, it's a spinner. It is, but uh, Tracy Grimshaw hmm. is one of your favourites, eh? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you just gone at her? <laughs> She's just random Free. people. She's a mad punchline to go to. <laughs> <laughs> so much shit rhymes with Tracy Grimshaw. She never interviewed you, did she? No. Yeah. She spoke shit about some fucking rap or rap, something. Yeah. And I just... That's what I want to get into, because I'm glad we're here, because... Yep. In terms of like Australia in general, yeah. um, one of your earlier comments, I think you said something along the lines of, and not to go against the Australian culture or, yep. you know, however we live our lives, but one of your motivations was like, I want to bring something different to what we're used to hearing. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. whatever it was, barbecues, all that yep. sh- shit. Barbecue rap, yep. Yeah. You said it like a long time ago. At the start, brother, like 2007. Saying it's time for a switch up. It's 14 years ago, something like that. Fuck. It is. It is, bro. (laughs) 
that make me feel old. But yeah, bro, yeah. back then, I'm glad you bring that up. I was like, I think I did an interview or something, bro. I was like, I'm sick of the barbecue rap. Like, yeah. Not dissing like Aussie culture, anything like that. Let's bring something new to it. And I was like the face of that, you know what I mean? And yeah, heaps of shit stemmed from that, I reckon. What about the your your like your battle with? Do you think that had helped or hindered your anxiety? Did that make it worse? Battle rap? No, as in just how uh, you know your motivation for like everything's going on like this. Uh, things are moving in this direction. Fuck all these people. I want to move in this direction. Mm-hmm. And you had, you know, your own personal stuff you had to deal with. Plus people coming at you. Mm-hmm. Do you think that helped making your music? Yeah, I did. It gave me a bit of a, as I said before, thick skin. Like, yeah, and it translated into my music, bro. When you break it down that way, like it did. I think it played a big part. And it showed my charisma too. Do you know what I mean? How you bounce like, back out you Yeah. Make a joke. You can't go at me and then I yeah. It showed like I'm standing up, it's fucking for fucking two minutes. Three rounds, two minutes, cunts can say whatever they want to me. But I get to rebuttal it. And fans like what I did better. Sometimes. There's some that say sixty one, there's that was a big one. That was the biggest battle in Oz history, like. The one where I'm not getting bigger than that. It's like no. a million fucking views. So like that and at the time that was fucking nuts bro it was like because remember it was like lads versus metros at that time do you remember that bro and it was like every, all the lad cunts were behind me and they had metros and this was before they were calling them eshays and that like, you fucking scummy lads you fucking you know what I mean that was the angle but now that's a popular shit so as you said before I took bullets that was part of it that was like we have the opposite then. But now it spins me out. It's mad, because that's a popular shit now, but back then, it's fucking... You got crucified for how you even dressed. Like, I remember shit, vividly yep. some of the comments and, like, I got just slammed, about your bro. collar, bro. Yeah, bro. like, he's got a pop collar, the fucking Nordica, Nordica and, you turn the and then top. I end up fucking working with him. You know what I mean? Like... I even work that to my advantage. So, so I was going to say, because you were the first rapper in Australia to get something of that. Like that. In rap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I think of it, yeah. I can't think of anyone I, else. I try with to. a big clothing, designer brand too. Yeah. Can and, yeah. It's a pretty big accomplishment. Even me, with the brand that people gave you, you still got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I was slandered. Like, he's a piece of shit, blah, blah. Fought through it all. From so say from two thousand eleven to eighteen, but eighteen Nordica were hitting me up. Fuck it. Okay. This this still sponsoring up. Yeah, still get yeah, yeah we're still working together. Got a box today from them actually. Shout out to Nordica. Get us one as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, like bullets and stuff. Oh, back to the, sorry the battle rap because for me that like. A lot of people have tried to replicate, uh, let's go do, I hear it now, I hear it now. And I'm sure you've probably been approached, let's try and, you know, do something of that nature again and bring, like, reinvigorate or do something for the culture like that. It hasn't been pulled off. No. It, uh, yeah, it's very difficult. And yeah. yeah, it is, bro. It is. When you break it down like that, it's fucking... It takes it a certain overlooked wit. sometimes. It and takes a so certain wit. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, keep going, bro. I'm just, yeah, it gets overlooked, so I'm glad you bring it up, bro. It's like... It's a skill, like, uh, it's like freestyling. Yep. It's not many rappers can do that. Yep. Uh, and then there's battle rap. Yep. It doesn't mean you just have to say the hardest bars. You have to make the other person look shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's you versus them, bro. They're there to end your career. That's how I went in it, like, I've got to end this cunt or I'm fucked. Especially 360, because if you remember the hype for that, but I, I was building for years, bro, and then we finally... Fuck. And that just fucking blew up. I've, I'm speaking of... Uh, and he dissed Nordica in that. He's like, fucking Nordica's Jealous, respectable bro. jumper. <laughs> fucking no. That's hate, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hater. <laughs> your diss, uh, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion. Yeah. That's why you're here, because I haven't done many interviews. Yeah. Uh, it's probably the best Oz actual diss to another rapper ever. 
in my opinion. The six like who's, <laughs> yeah, old man. <laughs> I reckon too, bro, and it got striked from my YouTube. So it's someone some else other. uploaded it. So it's Cursor Old Mad, it's called. And you rate it up there as one of the best diss tracks, do you? I think uh, Australian. Yeah, no one has. Australian, this yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't th- think uh, another Aussie has gone and another Aussie yeah. that vividly and that openly. Yeah. Like that in a diss, in a song and not yeah. make it about, hey, yeah. I'm going to come and. On so the backstory to that, yeah. just quickly, he, um, he was in America with a producer. I'm just at home. I can't start posting this fucking song on Facebook. When Facebook was popping on me wall, I play it. I'm like, 360's fucking dissing me. He's like, Curse, you rap like this in the battle. No, no, no. How can fucking Susan from Neighbours? He had some whack bars. I'm like, all right, I can't. He had a fucking car crash, uh, a go kart crash at Minto near where I lived and lost his, one of his balls, man. So I fucking went to the go kart place before it. And he I, went looking <laughs> for it. Announced well. where I was and fucking did a diss. Yeah. And he had, um, yeah, I just broke down everything in that song. It's like, yeah, I went pretty, pretty like, because he took shots. I'm like, all right, I've got to end it now. I've already battled. He's still taking shots. I think his missus' friends hung himself or something. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So rest in peace to them. But I was, uh, he was meant to be getting married and that got caught off. So I had to tie the knot punchline in there. So it was one of my personal favourites. <laughs> no disrespect, but. It's brutal, bro. It was brutal then, man. He was coming for my fucking neck. I, and he had a big fan base fucking attacking me, bro. I had to fight back. When that dropped, and that was the next day, I hit him with that. Went to Nebza's, recorded, and did a film clip that night. So I don't know the words that well. And I'm like, fuck you, upload it. And I was like, curse, I fought back. And he goes for three minutes. And I'm like, just bars about the cunt. Like, yeah. I was ready, because I thought we were going to battle again. So I had some in the stash, yeah. you know. How good's keeping it in the music, but like just yeah about the music. I never got to know straight shit. You know what I mean? Because it's fucking shout out to three sixty two. Like I respect the cunt. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And there's no beef there. It's just at the time it was taking shots. So but fuck yeah, go for your throat, man. Come at me. I have gotta defend myself. And because of the following he had, bro, fucking platinum artist at the time, and I was still like trying to break it through. Kind of helped me him going at me and then boom, half his hands went, fuck, who's this ruthless cunt? He battled him and now this. That's the backstory behind that one. But yeah, I like Amazing. that disc, bro. Yeah, I, I think it's hilarious, bro. <laughs> just the end of it, not to go too much on this topic, but uh, just the end of it cracked me up, bro. Like, it just made it into yeah, our... Me and Jay reminded me of what... And you, I think you've listened to a lot of Eminem too. And yeah, like big Tupac. fan. Yeah, who else? Eminem, you... Tupac, Fabulous, yeah. Lloyd Banks. That early 2000s hip hop, bro. I was Lord talking was to Walshy on the way here, saying the early 2000s shit, bro, the 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks. Like, yeah, that's what we grew up on, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of, the, at the time, a lot of the Aussie rappers were listening to barbecue rap. So that's what they'd done. I was on a whole other, different, growing up on different shit. I've listened to all your albums, every single one, yeah. and uh, you. There's progression even in the beat selection and the type of music you did. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I even came across um, you did over rock and um, rock and rap. You yeah. meshed them. Yeah, bro. You meshed them really yeah, well. Right. Really, really Thanks, well. Thanks, bro. Yeah. It's like a bit of heavy metal shit. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That, yeah. Because yeah. we're talking to you know, Spaniard and stuff. Yeah. To that and uh, oh, Black Black Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah true. Metal. Yeah. So there I was you like, go. This is you know he knows his music. Yeah. Actual music. Yeah, I do, bro. I was a Metallica fan and shit too. Pennywise fan. Like, yeah, I'm very open minded with music, bro. I can chill, smoke a spliff on the beach and listen to Powderfinger. Fuck yeah. You know what I mean, bro? I can. Yeah. Who so, do you listen to in your spare time, bro? Honestly, bro, a lot of shit. My playlist is so random. Not not just rap. So, nah, bro. I've got Powderfinger, Pete Murray, fucking Metallica. <laughs> fucking so broad, bro. I think that helps my music too, bro, from what I listen to. Because if it was just rap only, I don't know, kind of broadens my... Do you know what I mean, bro? Because it's so... Yeah. But yeah, so I think cunts would spin out at my playlist. There's, yeah, you cover... If, if you've got to press shuffle... Yeah, and you're like go to Curse across Spotify, press shuffle. Yeah, you'll probably come across. Yeah, all sounds. Yeah, 
That's one thing you bring up Spotify, bro. I reckon that's if in my career, I reckon that's one thing uh, I didn't focus on, right? Because the label told me there's this fucking thing starting. The Spotify, you put your albums up. I'm like, cunts don't buy it. They're like, no, you just stream it. I didn't understand this at the time, right? I'm 25 or so. I'm like popping, I'm popular and that. Like they're streaming, they're not getting my albums. And then it comes to a time they're like, you, Taylor Swift and someone else are the only ones that won't put your album there. I'm like, fuck that, I'm focusing on YouTube. And I never steered my fans to Spotify, still to this day. And if I got one mistake in my career, when the label told me that, I would have fucking pumped Spotify and sent all my fans there. But when you check my YouTube numbers, you can tell where my fans are going. Because Spotify's only got my albums, bro. It's only 50% of my work. Do you know what I mean? There's a whole other 50% on YouTube. I wish I translated that to Spotify, but over time, you learn these things. Do you know what I mean? I was young. I'm like, they download it off iTunes and buy it from the shops. Why the fuck would I put it up for free? Well, you get paid over time. They listen. No, they're not getting it. I mean, everyone started. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> kind of fucking misjudge that. So that's one fault in my career. I will openly admit, you know what I mean? But you know what? On the flip side to that, though, um, there are a lot of artists who are streaming artists, but like you'll go to their Spotify and they'll have, say, half a million to a million streams a month. Yeah. They're barely known, though. That's what spins me out, bro. That's what you go to one of their shows, right? So say they got a million, million month of listeners, five hundred. You got two hundred people there. Yeah. Go to one of my shows, two thousand every time. Yeah, sold out. Yeah. So yeah, that's a it's a good point. Just fa- I think you- it's if you get sorry to cut you off, bro. No, no, I no. think it's if you're getting playlists too. I don't get in fucking no playlists. I don't know if it's a radio thing, but check when you go to my Spotify. There's no. Fuck it. Done it my own way the whole time, bro. But you need to know where to find it on YouTube, you know what I mean? Got 110 million plus views on YouTube. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. It's 150 something now, bro. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my I had to fucking talk myself up there. No, go hard, bro. My bad. My apologies. Yeah, no, that's, that's one of my proud accomplishments, YouTube. Like, the views I got there. It's like the most in the country. The rap. When you think there's more than Neil Top Hood's views, I'm not bigger than them, but I'm just saying. Focus on the YouTube platform. Go to everyone's views. I'm not. Other than that, um, kid. Leroy. But yeah, is he Aussie rap? He's Australian. He's hectic, hectic music. Mm. Would you classify it as Aussie a rapper? I'd say he's in the. Sh- he's, he's a rapper from Australia. That's what I'd say. Agreed. Yeah. He's. Uh, wouldn't say it's Australian rap. Yeah, because he's kind of doing a new style too. Yeah. Like he's starting to be fucking way. Overseas, of course, big man. difference. So shout out to him. He said the same thing you said, and What's that? he uh he got crucified a little bit for it. Did he? About because he said in his first American interview, he said, uh, "I did. I, I never used to listen to this barbecue rap. It did my head in. Like I'd never listened to these guys. Did he say that? Did he? The same thing. Yeah, right. And he said this it was last year. He said it. Yeah. And everyone went. Why the fuck are you like this? Why are you going at Aussie rappers for? You should be encouraging us. Oh, he's a kid saying he just didn't enjoy the type of rap. Yeah. He's, he's right to say that, bro. Yeah. I was saying the same shit in 2010, so I understand what he's saying. He, probably, he Clearly by his music, he did not grow up on fucking Hilltop Hoods. There's nothing wrong with that. True. He didn't. He got his own thing, bro, so he can't get Chris alive for that. Shout out to him. He's shout out to him, him. yeah. Um, Big shout out. Full fucking... First overseas full like breakthrough. Cool. Seen a photo of him and Justin Bieber. Someone today, said, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it's yeah. massive. So shout out to him. But I think in your in respect to you though, what uh, you've done for Australia, yeah. um, I think in another ten years, this is what I think. In another ten, five to ten years, yep. your your respect is only going to increase over time. I hope so. that's the case, bro. I think if the blueprint I kind of set and what I did, it's got to be looked back on like, fuck. He's like, he was the fucking, I don't know what to call it, bro. Influence always comes to my head. Yeah. Because I influenced, how do I put it, bro? I influenced fucking a whole fucking new scene. Did, but a lot of people wanted to be cursor. Yeah, without sounding cocky. Like, people had their own shit going, but I had a lot of influence. If you remember, like, 
course. The rappers popping up everywhere. From every suburb. Yeah, bro. It was cool, man. It's funny. When would you say the shift happened, bro? In in what, what sense? In like the scene went from barbecue rap yeah. to like breaking through to the street shit. I say you you were among those who well if not one of the pioneers of a certain sound and then you capitalized on on that yeah in, I think that's what I'm trying to say mate yeah sorry. trying to put it in words you can't yeah so yeah I reckon that was around from the start really bro and then it really broke through from the battles and then just yeah influence I don't know why that always comes to my head bro. Influence is uh, a lot of people want to be influential, like yes, they try to be anyway. Yeah, but uh, it's I, a hard thing to be influential. Though. Why do you think? And I ask you, like, why do you think you're so influential? I think because I was just so. I think I'm influential because I'm so straight up. People seem to come up. They see me come from nothing. Fucking go to battles with fucking. <laughs> Dunlop Nikes like what the fuck are they you know what I mean they watch me and the progression and they just see me stand up to everything when I'm live TV stood my ground everything I face bro no radio and I think they were just like fucking they love back in the underdog bro and I think I was that cunt you know what I mean you have a very strong connection with your fans very bro dedicated I reckon the most dedicated in the country come to my shows and Fucking curse the tattoos and fucking non-stop curse the chance, bro. It's like it's like a cult. That's what me, JD, and Rates call it. And the boys, it's like a cult. It's fucking spin out, man. Yeah, I just stand there like that. Fucking crowd control, crazy. Shout out to all my fans. It's just different type of atmosphere. It's so like when you, as you were saying before, the Spotify playlist and that, well, the numbers and that. I reckon you should go off shows. Mm. See what people Tickets. are doing at show. Yes, bro. Merch. Merch. Who's moving shit? Who's making moves and money? Because there's so many different revenues. You know what I mean? You can't just rely on streams. Yeah. Yeah, you got fucking shows. You got merch. Yeah. You know, I made like four or five different revenues just from music, which then got me into fucking buy a house. Get into, you know what I mean? Different revenues, bro. All from social media, really. Really, yeah. Yep, YouTube and Facebook. Crazy, bro. I worked at... Because at the time I was blowing up, that was too. That's so I right, kind of yeah. grew with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like... Took advantage of it. Yeah. What's the lyrics? Because one, one of the lyrics you said, because you were talking about fans, yep. uh, you used to get a lot of... You get a lot of letters and people kind of pouring their hearts out to you. What's one... Uh, well, yeah, a couple of memories of... Uh, like a particular fan that just made you go, fuck, this is why I'm doing this. Straight away comes to my head in Melbourne, a gig. Um, a girl had a car crash and her partner died. And she come up after the show, bawling her eyes out. She's like, yeah, we had a crash. Uh, we love your music. If it wasn't for your music, I would have hung myself. She's there crying in front of me, bro. Just like, how do you take that? You know what I mean? Like, you can't really, thanks for the support. I'm like, oh, sorry that happened, but that really took me back, bro. She's like, you saved my life. And she's like, locking eye contact, not moving, bawling her eyes out. That was probably the deepest. That was, that was fucking, that, that made me go, fuck, my music's really fucking, mm. these people are, because that was around 2012, bro, that was early, after no rest dropped. I'm like, fuck, it's like someone coming up doing that. Spinning out, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's probably the most touching one. Literally told me, like, the, I would have hung myself fucking yesterday if it wasn't for your music. And that was an eye opener. A lot of your YouTube uh, comments, uh, I went through them, and uh, there's a lot of people like that who've like they've written heartfelt stories of how you saved their life through yeah. music yeah I try to keep up with them too bro like I under see bad you trying habits. to reply as yeah well. I try bro under bad habits there's like paragraphs of people just t- telling their story bro and it's like wow with that song that's probably the one that bad habits that's the one that really fucking saved a lot of people I'll tell you my tell personal me. experience that yeah. song made me cry did it? Straight yeah, up. yeah. I, I, cried, I cried writing it bro 
So yeah. That's crazy. Does that make you tear? Yeah. Yeah, it made up. Feel Me Boys tear up too. That's straight up. Because you, uh, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like Let's to talk, talk about, about it. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, I've never spoken on it, so. I'd like to. It's just it's so big. And yeah. uh, I think society's plagued with this shit. Uh, sorry to call it shit, but like it's plagued with anxiety issues. Yeah. Uh, and you, you wore it on your sleeve, like. Like it makes me uncomfortable, not uncomfortable in a bad way, but I just feel it when you when I talk about it because it means it's important to me. Let alone when you put it in your music. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about your experience? Because you yeah. put it all through your music, but I don't think you've ever. I haven't spoken on it. So um, yeah, I was fucking. I got in to be straight up. I got into the medication, bro. I got um, I was taking Zannies. And they were really um, helping me block out the anxiety, right? So I'd take them every few days, and then it turned into every day. And then mum wasn't doing enough. I turned into six a day by the end of it, bro. I was, I was fucked, right? I needed two in the morning, two in the other, two at night. Six zannies a day on a program. And I'm like, I've got to get off this shit. I'm going to have a kid. So I fucking went to rehab. That was fucking hell. They, they took me off it slowly, gave me Valium to get off it. The weaning off, eh? The weaning pair was like, man, like, I can't explain it. You talk about anxiety, fuck. I was in that rehab room fucking, even thinking of it makes me, yeah. So I come out of that, bro, and yeah, through it all I was writing and I wrote bad habits when I was fucked up. And I look back on it and I still get like, I can't listen to it, bro. You can't? I can't. Because it, it takes you back? It takes or? me to like being an addict and rehab and just all the shit I went through, bro. It's just fucking bad habits. You said in the, uh, um, yeah, nearly made you, no, you actually said in the lyrics. Uh, I cried crying, writing, it. writing it. Literally writing it, crying, because everything I was writing down, I'm like, this could be a story. I'm like, this is your fucking life, man. You know what I mean? I'm writing it going, fuck. Yeah, actually. And I think to put that out, bro, that was fucking, I was umming and ahhing. And I showed a few people behind the scenes and they're like, fuck, man, I'm crying over this shit. Like, oh, I'll put it out. Because that's like very open. Bro. You know what I mean? I was admitting, being caught a junkie my whole career. And then I got caught up in the Xanax medication. And then... It's like, fuck it, you want to hear the story? He's bad habits. And fucking boom. So many people relate, bro. Because as you said, anxiety, bro. Society, as you said, is just plagued with it, bro. I think that's why it connected to so many cunts. Sorry, so many people, you know? But yeah, the whole process of that, even thinking about it, bro, it's like, fuck. There's a... Uh, yeah, it was fucking crazy times, but I got through, worked to, worked to my advantage in the way where, fuck, <laughs> what could I do, bro? I like, had to write about it and put it out. And I think sharing that helped a lot of people too, bro. Like, of course. As you said, that's the song people write to me and even like people that are addicted to other shit. Yeah. Like, bro, bad habits, fucking, I'm on Zannies, I can't get off them, how do you do it? It's like, how do you apply to that, man? Spent fucking weeks in rehab, spinning out, bro. Got off it, and when I got off Xanax, bro, I was still, for like, I had just all an album engraved in the game. And that was like, it's my least favourite album, and it's some people's favourite, but it's my least because I was still coming off. I didn't feel normal till Lifestyle started feeling good again, but I was still, like, paranoid. Because when you come off Xanax, bro, it's fucking... Real shaky and they give you Valium, but I was like, if I get hooked on Valleys, it's the same fucking situation. So all chemical it affects the chemicals in your brain. You talked about it a lot. Yeah. Said uh, and you were openly honest and admitting like, yeah, might have fucked up how my brain works. Yeah. You just knew that, like that's what it does. Yeah. Because I'll tell you why it's like, you, even you talking about it makes me you know, but because I have a close mate going through. A really bad situation yeah. trying to get him to go to rehab and yeah. uh 
even just telling a friend, like even your mate, your best mate, wouldn't know like half of what the, it actually is. Yeah. So to yeah, put yeah. it out into the world, let alone and every person hearing it. Yeah. When it was out, how, like, how were you feeling? You're like, oh shit, I don't want to read any comments. I don't want to. Yep. Is that what happened? Exactly what happened when I dropped it. I, just I didn't know the feedback it. would get. I thought it would get you fucking junky on you the whole time. I didn't know because I was fucking fucked up. I wanted to stay away from it. But fucking 100,000 views overnight or something or whatever it got, I forget. But it's like my biggest song. I was that close to not dropping it. Why? Because you, oh, you didn't, yeah. Just, I was so open, bro. Now I can talk about it because I beat it. But at the time, it's like, fuck, do you want to tell cunts this? Do you know what I mean? Like, what can this affect, bro? But congratulations on giving up. Well, like, thank straight you, up. That's thank big. you. I think that's it's big. one of the biggest goals. But I got myself hooked, so. But quitting was, yeah. Still, It's like a big step, bro. Like, I knew I had my daughter coming and I didn't want to be fucking medicated the whole time. But it, see, the fuck thing was the Zannies helped with that anxiety in the comments. Pop some Zannies, bro. I'm writing, status, go to a film clip. I was very active on them. But then it come to the point I'm dependent on them. Fuck, I need them. Can't do work without them. Didn't want to live like that, bro. No way. And for people watching, how easy is it to go from... Hey, it's just one, it's just two, all of a sudden. Like, there's a lot of kids who, yeah. a lot of people who listen to. Yeah, so you get caught up. You know what I did? I was like, okay, I'll have it today, skip tomorrow, have it the next day. That means I'm not addicted because I'm not it's on it every day. That's what I'm telling myself. And then it turned to the day I'm coming off. I can't fucking function, so now I need it every day. Then one won't do shit, man, after a while. One's any, if you hook. Two. I feel all right. It's wearing off. Three. I've got to sit. But, yeah. I beat it, so. Oh, no, I'm more, uh, I appreciate you going into detail. No, that's all right, bro. So that was like 2017, I think, the end of it. 16, maybe. But, yeah. For anyone getting That's the in- first time I've opened up about it. Sorry to cut you off. No, I'm just a bit spin out there. It's mad. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing up these topics, bro. Right? Interviewed by cunts are just typical. Like I was saying to you off cam, typical questions, bro. I like digging into this shit. Yeah. From the battles to this shit. So I can see. No, I appreciate you even, like, yeah, talking about it. Um, so, um, on, a, on a, on a, like, a sort of moving, on, a moving forward, uh, in your in your life, um, yep. you you made some you know big decisions. You moved out from Campbelltown. Campbelltown. Yeah. And uh, for some people, and and I see this now, current where uh, it's it's not they're not. It's the goal isn't to get out. It's mm. to stay and and, and run it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stay and have the career that that spins me out, bro. My goal was to fucking get money, get a fucking house, and move near the water. It's what I always wanted to do. And I, I did it. But, yeah, now it's like postcodes. Do you know what I mean? That's the aim. Like, nah, man. Get your money and fucking invest. Fucking. Like, if you like the area, it's not on the same move, but you know what I mean? They've got the wrong intentions. Fuck running the area. Go live in a fucking... What you always wanted to, you know what I mean? Enjoy life. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, bro. Yeah, like people are scared of that comfort zone, I think, with everything, music. Yeah, comfortability, fuck. It numbs you. Yeah. Yeah, you get content, content with everything, you know? Yeah, then move forward. Yeah. Like you could have maybe five years ago, after five albums or six albums, or just went, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. And I almost did... When I had a habit and that, I almost stopped it out in six. Did you? No one knew, but almost like, I fucking beat the Xanax. And then I'm like, your fucking goal was 10 albums in 10 years. Stick to it. So you said that from early on, 10 in 10. From the first album. Oh, right. I ain't got a nebulizer, I'm saying 10 for 10. It's always the aim. And at six, six is what um, Bad Habits was on, album six. And that's when... um. 
I'm yeah. halfway. I'm halfway. Mm. Well, so you go through hiccups in your career for younger rappers that are listen. Like you want to throw it away sometime. Well, I did anyway. But I got caught up in a lot of shit, as I was saying earlier. Talking about the music industry, because you know, uh, a lot of there's a. I think, in my opinion, it's a bit easier to to make some noise now. Yeah. Because you've got all these tools. Yeah. You got you know streaming. You got all this stuff that you can take advantage of. Um, and uh, when you when you're getting into the game, a lot of people think oh, it's like you know make a couple songs, put them out, and then see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you 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 had method. You had the plan. Had like, uh, you know, uh, intention, like goals. This is what you wanted to achieve. Um, what's what's the next goal? Like, what do you what is what do you, what do you want to do accomplish? So, at the end of it all, bro, I'm gonna leave my imprint on the game, which I think I've done. But album ten, I want it to be my best piece of work, so I'm taking my time on it. People are saying it's not 10 in 10 years if it doesn't drop this year, but I'm not rushing the final fucking product of what I've been building up to. It's got to be fucking perfect, if you know what I mean. Of course, yeah. So, yeah, getting album 10 out, um, maybe some shit in real estate. Like, yeah, like get into that shit and, um, yeah, just fucking get a few more revenues. Like I'm working on now, like I worked out music you can get some revenues from, but there's other shit once you got money to get more you know what I mean so the end goal bro is just to set my family up and honestly live comfortably and leave an imprint on the game you know you're not gonna um, I think in one of your your lyrics you said my next interview I'm gonna pull my pants down <laughs> yeah that was talking about like if it's on TV or something uh, don't worry mate I was to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> no I was saying like you know if Fucking yeah, so it's like, morning show, get me back. It's like, fuck you, set me up last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got years of experience behind you and navigating through the the industry. I know we talked about radio. We talked about the, the kind of, they pretended you weren't there for a while, kind of like suppressed it. Like, yeah. oh yeah, he's not, he'll die out. So do you have any pointers for, you know, people who are experiencing like, fuck, this industry is tough. Yeah. It's so difficult. Uh, I, I've only been in the industry for a few years and I'm like, this is taxing. This is uh, toxic and taxing. Draining as well. Very draining. Yep. Very. Yep. So my kind of process was fuck what the industry is doing. <laughs> I'm going to do it my way. If it doesn't work, fuck it. They're not going to accept me. I'm going to make them come to me. So fucking pump YouTube, fucking blown up. Uh, go meet Warner. Get a distro deal. And they don't. They just put my music out, bro. So I'm still very fucking independent. independent. Like, people see Warner and think, uh, no, they do nothing, bro. They put. So, uh, shout out distribute, to Warner and that, sorry. Yeah. They distribute my shit. They get it in stores. And Warner told me themselves, shout out to Ben from ADA. He come to my show at um Melbourne. He said, no one sells hard copies like you. Like I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> heavy metal bands, he told me, that they put out, that sell out stadiums. Way bigger than me. I'm not going to compare myself to them. But he goes, you sell more hard copies than that. Like, so they go fans, to they, the store? Fans actually go to the store. And then, like, they bring, I get emails or whatever, and they're like, you got to print more. I'm like, all right, fucking, what if I get returns? Because when you get returns, you got to pay it back in the industry. And never get them, bro. Fans fucking buy them. Touch wood, they keep doing it. Buy them. Some of them would <laughs> <buy. laughs> Most stolen fucking CD in JV Hi-Fi history. But um, as far as your question and uh, advice to artists yeah. that are getting shunned by the industry, just do your own thing and it's going to look fucking dark. It's going to look like you're not getting anywhere. That's just, but just fucking keep going. Try be original. That's very important, bro. If you're a clone of someone, you're going to get overlooked. You've got to make people like go, fuck, he's different. Who's, who's this cunt? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of people, and shout out to the drill phase, that's blown up, but just doing that, and like, it's the same shit, you're going to get overlooked. Just try to be original. 100. That would be my advice. Be original and fuck, fuck the radio on that. In this day and age, you got everything you need. you got YouTube, you got Spotify, you got Instagram, you got Facebook. You don't need that shit, man. 
Like, yeah, piece back to back in the day, it was pretty important when I needed it. Mm. It was like, you don't make it without the radio. I kind of like, yeah, fuck you. I showed him, you can. And you got to number so, one with it. Yeah, bro. Number with one no radio on iTunes, no, no radio, nothing. Dropped, I beat Katy Perry on my third album or something. I think you knocked off Linkin Park as that's well. That's right. That's right. I was trying to think of it. Nah, there was one year there was Katy Park Perry and Linkin well. Park. I was like, fuck. Yeah. And at the time, bro, you had to, it wasn't streamed. You had to go to iTunes and fucking buy the album or Google Play or whatever. Purchase and that. Sixteen dollars or something. It was before streams. Yeah. It was going number one, so and then streams coming. Yeah. It's easier to go gold and platinum now. Back then, when I was doing it, yeah, people had to physically fucking buy it. You know what I mean? YouTube didn't count. People had to go to stores. Or go to iTunes and buy it. And I had dedicated fans that fucking bought it. Or stole it. The, the <laughs> they keep it behind fucking things, bit. bro. Yeah, they're like <laughs> coming to JB Hi-Fi. They did it for recently for all the dice when I went to, which store was it? I say I was going to say Sanity. They're so old. Remember yeah, Sanity? I remember Sanity. Is it still around? Nah, oh, nah, fuck. They're gone. Showing our age there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Funny, bro. Yeah, even my first tape I ever bought was Linkin Park. We were just talking about it. But, uh, yeah, JB, I went in, rolled the dice, and uh, had a little sign. said, uh, if you want it, please come to the counter. Okay, behind the counter. Yeah. That's most of my CDs, bro. That's since Nebulizer. That's since 2011. And I worked that to my advantage. Post it. Most stolen object in JB Hi-Fi. Go, go buy it. Get it what you got to do. Fuck yeah. They're going to order more stock once you... Not not advising them to steal, but that's what was happening. Yeah. So yeah, it's fucking pretty spin out. So a lot of stuff you 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 went through and, and have done, and there's still uh, a lot that you'll want to do. Um, yeah. But uh, like the <clears throat> there's a few things that you you still do along the way. Like uh, I touched on it earlier, but you did these segments. Um, he used to go on IG Live and they used to crank like your numbers on IG Live like in the thousands yeah, they'll pop. and you'd, you'd never promo it you'd never you just go just up randomly. and just sit there and you'd uh, do like these um, almost give it life advice Monday night advice that's the <laughs> one that's the one <laughs> I fucking should still do that yeah yeah, the numbers were massive, eh? And, you know when I stopped people were writing it's Monday <laughs> what the fuck's the advice <laughs> yeah. but yeah that's just using social media yeah. to my advantage again. But now I'm at a point, bro. Like, I'm living this coastal life. I can kind of dip into music when I want because I've done so much already. Before it had to be consistent. Now I can take time. Like, I think my next track I'm dropping, if it's out by this or it's not, um, it's called Winner, but I think that's going to be pretty big, bro. The process was that was the chorus straight away. I knew so it was going to be big. Idea, I got the beat. I knew it was going to be big, brother. Yeah. And I'm like, this needs a catchy hook. Fuck the verses. Focused on the hook. I'm like, ah, oh, I got it. I went and recorded it, and and it's the first time I like, I recorded, sent it back to Open Till Eight. Shout out to him. Oh, he, yeah. he fucked with the beat, changed mm. it round, sent it back, and my engineer mixed it. And then send it back, add shit. First time something's been like, I've had time to fucking sit there, send it back. Because usually, bro, I end tour in June, July. Mm. I release an album in November. The deadline's October. So those every album I've had three months to write, four months. When you go through my catalogue. Yeah. It's a quick turnaround. This time, fuck rushing it, man. I want to make the perfect fucking album. Okay. And that's not downplaying my other albums, I'm just saying there was a time limit on them. People might not know, but yeah. It's like, tour, record, drop album, tour, record, drop album. That's how I got caught up in it all. But that's advice as well, I like, give the youngins, like, keep the content, keep people interested. Well, yeah, I'm just going to pull out my phone. Yep. Can you grab my phone, son? Because, uh, it's it's actually tri- tri- not tripping me out, but um, there was a, I think you said something along the lines like somewhere around ten years ago. Yep. You gave uh someone asked you like what advice would you give like to to artists 
Is I'm not even like trying ago, to creep it. Yeah, something yep. like that. And yep. I was like, I want to write this down. Maybe he says like, and this is the stuff he said. You go, set up a YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, make sure a fan knows where to find you. All right? Never be restricted and stay yourself. All right? Yeah. Have thick skin and don't let haters get to you. So it looks right here. Stay relevant. You said that earlier as well. It's true. I've bro. said all this shit, bro. And, but this is the not the worst, but <laughs> be consistent and make sure you're dropping quality with quantity. Well, that's what he said back then. And you're still saying the same stuff. Bro, that's, that's, tri- that's trippy, eh? Let's go take that in for a sec. So, I've had that, that proves, sorry, bro. No, that's, fine. that's funny. Yeah. That proves I've had the same fucking mindset since I started. You know what I mean? I've had the same fucking. Fuck that tripped me out. I literally before you pulled your phone out, ten said the same shit. I know that's why I was like, he <laughs> just said what was on that list. Wow, he just said the same thing, and then and, and I don't do interviews, bro. So I'm not I'm not media trained. Yeah, yeah. I just say say what I say. So for that, that's like, fuck that really. That just proves it. That's the method I used. It, the method works. It it's, works, bro. Yeah, remind me of. I don't know. You you were around for his pop, but obviously not to that scout because he was in America but do you remember when Soldier Boy did his thing bro he was the first on the internet shit yeah yeah. like I yeah. know you can't diss him in that but I got respect for the cunt because the way he used fucking, fucking social media you, you gotta respect the cunt bro yeah I don't care what cunts think of his music and that I fucking he works social media perfect probably the first American rapper to young cunt too it's like he used it to his vantage hard. If you compare him, it's probably similar how... I don't know, he probably got radio playing that, but, like, how he was doing his own shit, building his social media platform. He had ringtones, remember? But kiss me through the phone. Every fucking bitch at school had that ring. Sorry, every girl at school had that fucking ringtone, you know what I mean? Imagine... Yeah, so... I respect him, very. I thought that too. The similarities there. There is, because... In the way he come up... It's like you came out, no, not with a, honestly, it's not, I don't want to use the word character because you didn't put on anything. It's no. just you, but. Charisma. Yeah. Charisma, being different. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah. Being confident. Yeah. Like, that was a big part, bro. Big part. Because, yeah, as I said before, if you're not fucking, don't have thick skin and you're not confident, you're going to get crushed, bro. It's fucking social media is brutal, bro. Yeah, bro. You, know you said actually mean? once as it's well. It's brutal. You're like, oh, I don't want no fucking haters on my thing. I'll block them. Yeah. I'll show my fancy. Yeah. So you're going to come and say stupid shit? Yeah. Fuck off. It's not always, bro. If I see a comment, not, no hate, positive on my page. Works to my advantage. You block them, they write on their page, fucking cursor block me. And can't say, oh, I'll go to his page. Free promotion, bro. Just keep blocking the haters. Fuck, 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 fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. And then half the time I don't see it, but if I see hate, bro, <laughs> go write your opinion elsewhere. It's free promotion. Yeah, as long as they're talking about it. <laughs> it's worked for me, bro. As we said like earlier, the first fucking four or five years was just hate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they were all talking, bro. And my YouTube numbers were clicking. Like, you go watch Highest Man. Shout out to Strace, but we're shopping, swapping shirts for a new thing. Hey, let me wear yours. Like, literally, fucking <laughs> broke cunts just trying to break through. It connected with the people, bro. That's inspired, bro. I'll tell you now, I'll let you hear. You, you, your mindset inspired me because... Thanks, uh, bro. I, uh, coming into the industry, you have a certain intention of what you want to do and achieve. Then you get certain personalities and people who are like nah don't come here mate like it's you're not welcome Mm -hmm. you're not welcome Mm -hmm. and then you start to realize the more people you talk to you're like i'm not fucking nuts it's just they're the odd ones something's wrong with you mate 100 percent, bro. and so over a year i've done spaniard like sorry i've interviewed spaniard shouts to spaniard too he's doing this thing yeah um, he's and he's is... fucking blowing up crazy too. He's yeah. got that like. Yeah. Now I said before, you got to be original and stand out. Yeah. Who's Spanian like? He's his fucking self. That's he's it. Fucking straight up raw cunt. And and he gave he gave me the time of day. He was real. Yeah. He still is real. Yeah. You've given me the time of day. 
there's only two in over a year. In the industry. In the industry, and and I feel like you two are like, if not the realest cunts here. See, cunt bro, means a lot. So just you saying this stuff, so that's why I just keep going. Don't worry about what no one's saying. Yeah, bro. As soon as you hit me up, I'm like, I did me research. Like, no, you know, I sucks your shit, and I'm like, no, he's fucking solid, real cunt. Dang. He's not gonna sit there and like I knew I was coming to a real interview. Yeah. Haven't done one in seven years. I'm sitting here Full special cousin. Giving you <laughs> But what do you think I'll just ask you This your opinion On a couple of things What yeah. do you think of uh, The coloured uh, Bloke 6 9 And what he's doing And like that That moving the internet What do you, what do you think of that we see, As a as someone from Opposite side of the world Seeing him move like, What do you think of that oh, I think He's a bad dog That's <laughs> not right But <laughs> He's a bad dog bro He got every cut locked up But he's a troll and he worked fucking social media to his favour. Yeah. And he's rolling around with security, running up on cunts and shit. Like, <laughs> and, and trolling, bro. It's like you're waiting for the cunt to get knocked. That's the entertainment for me, bro. Mm. <laughs> you're waiting for some cunt to shoot him. Yeah. True? Like, yeah. Yeah. But Come as a bitch. I think, yeah, bro. He's fucking... I don't like the fucking dissing the dead people. Shit. Mm. You saw what he did, like, re- like last week, this week. This and King Von and... That's and what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, I don't like that, bro. That's bad. I don't like that. Speaking on the dead, like, he'll piss on him and I seen him tipping a bottle. I'm like, fuck, this cunt's got to get knocked. But, yeah, my opinion on him. <laughs> He's a bad dog, but he worked the internet to his favour. He's fucking got a tactic of running up on cunts with surrounded by security. Like, it's getting weird, bro. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's getting weird, bro. Does, do Imagine think... that in early 2000s, bro. Oh, yeah. Like mate. what we come up on, 50 Cent Lloyd Bain. Like, run up on fucking Tupac. You're getting shot, aren't you, huh? I uh, don't know. Or did we just not... I don't know. What does that say about uh, it's different people in the audience now, bro? Mm. What does that say about people? He, the numbers are fucking huge when I seen it, bro. Like, what? They like it. They like drama. There you go. They like drama. Drama and hate. I think that's a whack way to come up, bro. Yeah. If you come up fucking dissing someone or something or trying to go, that's a fucking shit way. You gotta fucking build a fan base and connect with them and try to get attention by dissing cunts. That's why I don't reply to no disses. You know what I mean? Unless they're on my fucking level, like at the time 360 was bigger than me dissing me, I'll go at him. But little cunts dissing. Don't give it attention. It can be called the 6 9 move now. <laughs> we can call that don't six nine me cunt. Do, do you, I think we touched on it earlier, but uh, do, do you think you're the first Australian rapper to bring streets to the mainstream, like actual street? Yeah, so when we break this down, people like, who wasn't the first? I wasn't the first fucking street rapper. Yeah, right? I wasn't. There were people current. before me. There were fucking, let's get that clear. There were street rappers before me. But I'm the first one. That fucking broke the mould, got ignored by the fucking whole industry. We went over it. Labels, radio, fucking hated me. Got ignored. I broke through and it was accepted. So I would say I'm the first street rapper to break into the mainstream. But there were people doing street rap before me. That's I where I don't want it to get confused. I understand. I understand. But my, my influence after I broke through, fucking show it. But yeah. When, when people say that, I'm like, no, I wasn't the first. There were street rappers before me. But when you put it in a sentence like that, the first rapper to break in, street rapper to break into the mainstream and blow up, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Okay. I think yeah. that's fair to say that's Cursor. I, th- I, th- I think so. Yeah. And not to touch on any particular artist or anything, yeah. but just you seeing what's happening now for the country. I know you touched on it earlier, but yeah. I think your opinion for the rest of the country means a lot. Yeah, uh, at this point in your career, so for the country and what's happening and the attention and a lot more people coming out and and rapping and, yeah. and showing where they're from. How how do you feel seeing that now? I think it's mad. Yeah. Like the scene's blown up, bro. It's fucking. It trips me out because I'm like, fuck. These, as I said before, it's just an obese records hilltop hood type thing now, yeah. bro. It's like the scene's blown up, and I think it's good because more eyes on the scene. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's fucking watching Oz rap now. So I think it's a good thing. I just think some of the scene, some of the scene, um, 
needs to be original, bro. Original content. Like you got your people that stamped it, and then you got people biting and that. Just think there should be more originality, if that's a word. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Original like, be itself. Yeah. I think that's why fucking Spanion stands out too. Mm, they don't give a fuck attitude. Fucking. It's, it's all, mad yeah. seeing that. When I look on the scene, you come past the Spanion video, he's telling you, fuck you, you fucking. <laughs> I'm like, fucking oh. That's the shit we need. I um, see you. I enjoy that shit though. Yeah, I see you like show him love and. Because a lot of would assume. And I see this, bro. I see, I see the old OG. I don't want to name names, but like, yeah, yeah. OG rappers kind of like also still not giving due credit to no one current. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like as if they still the scene still hasn't popped. A bit like, brother, where are you? Like, whoa, a bit bitter, right? Yes, yes. That's Hating, like, yeah. When I see you talk about it, you're actually like proud and yeah. Fucking earth comes like, yeah. Do your thing, yeah. But some are bitter. Some are heaps bitter, bro. Heaps bitter. They they want rules, bro. They want rules for the scene, and these new rappers are breaking their hip hop fucking rules that they're trying to set that don't exist. Because if I went by the rules, I would have had to do the fucking illy hilltop hoods. Fucking, do you know what I mean? There's always rules, bro. There's always older, bitter cunts. Like, fuck off. Let the kids do their thing, bro. It's fucking oh. mad to see. Oh. They're sick, bro. Let them fucking blow up. So good to hear you say that. Yeah. I just have so many people, bitter bro. negative people. Yeah, like. bro. I try not to go on to tell you the truth my social media much these days. Like, sorry. Like I'll post. Fuck, I'll post a um a photo on that. <laughs> sorry, I'll That's post right. a photo on that and I'll um yeah read comments and that. But fucking, I try not to go on to fucking see all that shit, all the bitterness and <laughs> it pisses me off. Fuck. Cause you, so it can't be, it can't be himself. You know what I mean? It reminds me of when I come up, when I see that, I'm like, I remember cunts like that trying to shun me out. I let the kids do their fucking thing. I let the cunts do it. You know what I mean? It's like 23, 24 year olds killing it, and then there's bitter cunts, 10, 15 years older. What's this new shit? I like, fuck that. Let it blow up, bro. This is what it is now. And I'm one of the ones that fucking broke through, so I can say that. You know what I mean? Because you look like a, you look like a, you just look like a straight hater. Like, just it's right. They look bitter. It's like in my chorus of the next song. Oh, is it? Oh, I got them all so bitter. <laughs> so it's no, yeah, way. is it the, I'll send it, okay. yeah, I'll send it to you. Yeah. But, and that's in the song called Winner. Winner, yeah. The bitter, chorus bitter. is actually, why oh, I got them all so bitter. And it's like, because bitter comes, bro. So it's, been out, you bring that up, bro. That's actually really timely. I'm glad you put in that out. It's fucking gonna work out perfect, bro. I think everything will. I said in there, the song's gonna like, oh fuck. Song matches this interview. Amazing, just been out. But yeah, it's good to see the scene, bro. It's mad. It's mad. Who would have thought? Ten what? years ago, when I was doing battle rap, oh, who would have thought every camp? This is what everyone wanted to happen. Hundred. And then it happens, and then what was it? It's what we wanted. The industry's now playing street cunts. Uh, <laughs> the labels are buying songs off street cunts. That was unheard of. They didn't want... They brushed that, bro. But it got that big. How can you hate on that? You know what I mean? It got that big. That Mad. Young cunts getting money. They did what you did. You made them come to you. Because you were that popping, like, you can't ignore something that's that good anymore. Yeah. And if I listened to the industry, I would have quit. Hard. Oh, no. Yeah. After that first album, when they tried to block me out, I was like, fuck. I was like, fuck you then. I've got these fans. I've been working. Yeah. Make my own way. Is it right if I talk about mistakes? Yeah. Because uh, you touched on a couple before. Uh, more talking, maybe not music, just life. Yep. And, and, you know, you talked about addiction and stuff, which... That was one mistake. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. um, you, you are very open and honest with how loyal you are to your, your miso yep. and, and your relationship. And it's a very, like, un, like it's your world. It's got yep. nothing to do with no one. And my baby girl, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, my daughter, that is, yeah. Sort of, like... 
as a man, because you, you, you've, you have grown as a person, you've developed as a person, what do you, what advice do you give for kids who are kind of like uh, unsure of what the future might hold for them? And you're like, oh, I don't know what the fuck, like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. What would you say to them? I'd say just, um, you got to, um, kind of have some type of plan, man. Some, some type of plan. Even if it's a day-to-day thing, you can't just scratch your head and look for things like, um, yeah, make some type of plan, even if it's fucking working in a factory and you get mm. your money and you live with your family. And, like, fucking get a mad job. Go fucking... You gotta work for what you get. You can't just sit there and fucking... You know what I mean? So I give them the advice to go hard, set a goal and fucking accomplish it. No matter what you gotta, you gotta set a goal, man. Mm. You gotta have some type of goal. Mm. If you don't have a goal, you, you're not gonna know where you're going. Mine was to get a house, move near the water, support my family. I was lucky enough to it, be able to do it. And yeah, that was my goal. I don't know if it was, it was all the hard work, bro. Bit of law of attraction, bit of, but um, yeah. I so say you gotta have a plan. That'd be my advice. Start setting a plan. Even if you got to go work, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Do you believe in, like, uh, speaking stuff into existence? Yeah. Heavy. Heavy. Yeah. And especially the last few years, I watch what I say. Because a lot of shit I've said in songs, yep. it's fucking happened. Yep. After it. Like, fuck. Listen to what you said here. Like that shit, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, even speaking shit, mm. I always like touch wood. I'm like real fucking cautious on that. I'm a big believer in speaking shit into existence. And what you give out, that's what you're going to get back. Like, yeah. This is full science. Uh, your body listens to what you say. A lot of people yeah. don't know this. Yeah. So, so I'm not a scientist, but uh, the water in your body, because we made up a 70% water, all that stuff. Yep. And when you speak, it sends wavelengths and different currencies into your body yep so if you're sitting there neggy which we all get like that 100 percent. it's gonna multiply but if you it's sit there get worse but be realistic too not yeah just speak la la land or fairy tales yeah but as you said if you're sitting there negative and then negative every day and you're putting out negative energy it's not gonna get fucking anywhere you're gonna have that positive fucking at some stage, we all go, we all fucking have our down when we feel like shit, but you can't stay, can't stay in the rut. Fucking life. You talked about future, you talked about the songs, you talked about. But You're a pretty open interview, bro. Huh? Probably the most open interview I've done. Yeah, this, I think, oh, so I'm like racking my brain going, do we cover <laughs> something I didn't want to cover? No, nah, <laughs> like, I'm gonna, I'll try, try one more thing. Cool. Yeah. Nah, bro. All of it. Um. Oh, yeah. I'll give you another little bit of uh, something no one else has done. I think you're the, the only Aussie rapper that's got a song with uh, Future. Mm. And I saw that, bro. Can I say something? Yeah. When I saw you that, it was I, fake? I legit thought it was fake. <laughs> yeah, every I was like, he's taking the piss. <laughs> like, it's not Can't true. Can't I was trolling. Okay, this yeah. guy is just taking the piss. Yeah. A lot of people thought that. But, like, that's future. future. Like, and at the, in 2015 when they dropped, that. It, it it was crazy. he was Drake. Do you know what I mean? He was at that time. So to get him get him on a verse, you know the boss shit about that that I'm proud of? God. I got paid to do that. People think <laughs> I paid future. I got paid. That's why the end, I end the verse with, now I've got to go, this is all I got paid for. The producer paid me to be on that, bro. and I put it out for ABK Records. So he paid me for the verse. We got Young Buck and Future on there. Gave me the song. So people were like, I didn't even pay for. It. I got paid to be on there. I think that's boss shit. Those people were like, how much did? You, how much would you pay Future? Fifty, hundred grand? No, I got paid to get on that. <laughs> I had to say it in the verse. I had to end it on that. Like, I think that's boss shit. It is, bro. It is. <laughs> A lot of she does boss, so like, if you have that boss mentality, it transfers. Uh, 
But I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Yeah, bro. Um, this is probably my favourite interview, but so I need to sit down and fucking yeah, talk proper shit. Bring back a few memories too, bro. We did when we went into that bad habits area. Never spoken on that. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure how to bring it up. I was like, it's very personal. It's yeah, very, but no, I'm glad you bring it up because a lot of people struggle with that shit, man. To this day, like every day, that it's a spin out, but it's like something here. Every day, bad habits is brought up, and I don't listen to the song. Work that out. That's how impactful it was. Yeah, like, relatable. Yeah. At the start, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just can't listen to it. But not, you, you saying this is your favourite over the course of your years of interviewing no, life, far, it means a lot to me. Thanks, man. I didn't mean to fucking... Fuck the I got a proper, like, yeah, fuck that, is. bro. I got a proper interview. And I see can't straight up. As soon as you leave, there's probably five things I forgot to... Fuck, yeah, I know. Nah, it always happens. Should and I I'll say, that? fuck, I should have said this. I should have... Yeah. But... It happens, but... I think we covered heaps, bro. I mean, thank you, bro. No, thank you, brother. Um, right. like people like Taho who talk about the industry, but no one will listen. They don't no look one out wants for to that. listen because oh, he didn't start it in the Warner mail room and work his yeah. way up. Yeah, he didn't, you know, do it the way everyone else did yeah. it. So we can't listen to him. Yeah, no, we got to ban him. Yeah. We got to cut him out. That's how they work, bro. And it's fucked. And people we give up so much. Like, like, yeah, it's good you haven't quit because of that, bro. People get like feel down about that because you can't break into the industry fuck that do your own thing I don't give up bro that's it don't give I up I can tell no. thank you Mommy. thank you thank you thank you thank you um, see you boys you're a mad cunt bro nah bro